Hey kids, welcome to a lesson four, list make. Hopefully you watched the video before this on list practice, or you had a pretty good understanding of a list before you made it here. Kids, really the secret to all this is lesson one, two, three, pretty much it teaches you exactly how to do this. So if you're totally confused by everything, please watch those other videos. A lot of this is just copying and pasting some things we've already done. Well, what are we trying to do here, kids? We're trying to make this Remind Me app. When I hit Run, I should be able to type something into my Reminder input, hit Add. It should come up to this screen right here. Every time I hit Add, I should get another item, and I can flip back and forth to see them, and it'll keep track of whatever index they are at. Pretty neat little thing here. Again, kids, I said a lot of this is going to be some copy and paste stuff. What specifically am I talking about? Well, if you remember back to between lesson two and three, we had a couple lessons that taught you exactly how to do a list scrolling pattern. If I'm a good teacher, maybe the list will pop up here. Whoop. And you can see we're pretty much just going to copy this exactly. This teaches you how to do a left and a right button and how to start updating the screen. Let's start working right off of this, kids. I'm gonna create a new variable, index. That is gonna be set to zero. And again, kids, computers count zero through nine, humans count one through nine. We're gonna declare another variable, and I'm gonna call this a remind list. And we are gonna set this right now to just empty. We have brackets usually for our list. That's what denotes that. And by just keeping it empty, it just means we're going to populate it a little later. Again, looking back here, we are going to add for our left button. If you go over here to the show blocks, kids, if you just click down here, you'll see a left button is right there. If you don't want to type it in, we're going to do an if statement here. If the index is greater than zero, and we need some parentheses here. Oops, wrong one. And then to enclose this, we need a curly Q bracket. And if the index is greater than zero, we just want to go up, right? We want to go positive, scroll through the images positive. After that, we close this bracket right here. And then we are going to update our screen. Actually, I think we need one more here, kids. And at this point, oh, no, we didn't need that one. At this point, kids, we're going to put the update screen in in a minute. But just notice on this page here, it's already done for you. That is for our left button. We want to do on event. And well, let's just drag this in here so we don't got to type this all out, kids. On the event on this one, it's going to be the right button. And same thing, when it's clicked, it's going to do something. And on this, if the index, same thing, is less than, and we want it to be less than the total length of the list, right, kids? If to do your homework is number 10, we want it to stop at number 10. That means we just want to figure out your index is going to be less than your remind list dot length. Kids, remember though, computers are counting zero through nine. You're counting one through nine. We're going to do minus one so the indexes line up. At this point, we need a little bracket right here. And this one will just do index plus plus. Oops. We'll go index plus plus off of that. So again, left button clicks, right button clicks. Once again, a left button here. As long as it is greater than zero, we can go left. For the right button, as long as we are less than whatever the total 
number of items in the list is minus one because it's going zero through nine. We count one through 10. We can go with the right button, kids. That easy. Our last thing we have to do here is we have to make a function. So we're going to drag a function in here. And this one's going to be update screen. And you can see on the sheet here, it's updating the label. Well, kids, we're not going to update the label here, are we? We're going to update the reminder output here, if you look. And that's what we want to update. What are we going to update it with? Text. And what are we going to update it with? Well, wherever our remind list is at, instead of doing a dot length, we can call it towards its index, which is pretty cool. We're just going to take a set property here, drag this in. And which one again? The reminder output, reminder output. What are we going to do? Text. And what text we want? Well, again, we are doing the remind list. So we're going to do remind a list and this time just whatever index we're on and that's it kids we're going to call this update screen in each one of these and we're going to call it after our if parts here Ooh, don't forget your parentheses and semicolons. So we're updating there. We're updating there. Don't forget, kids, you always have to update your program as well. So we're going to put it up there. Kids, well, this ends our copy and paste part. From here on out, we're going to have to figure it out on our own. And that's okay. We can do this. We've done something similar to this already. Think back to the music list. We had to do a add button towards that. Here is our list practice number 12. This is where we were adding songs here. And if you look, we actually did this code already. And pretty much everything we need to do is in this block right here. And what's it really saying? Well, it's saying on the event, I hit the update button, which is just that new song. We are going to create a new variable song to get the text. Now, remember kids, computers can really only do one thing at a time. If we just created a variable song list to get the text, we also couldn't store this information. We can only do one thing at a time. Computers are like me, really fast, but not so smart sometimes. Wait, never mind. That's why we create this other variable song here. And we're just getting the text of the user input. After that, this part right here is just getting whatever the rank of the dropdown is. And we're going to have to do something similar to this because if you remember to the other one, boop, we have an encounter here, just not a dropdown one. So we have to do something very similar. Well, let's just start copying some of that code in and figure it out as we go. So on the event, and on this one, it's going to be the add button. And when the add button is clicked, we want something to happen. Well, again, remember kids, we need to get that user input, right? We need to store it because we have a list and we can only do one thing at a time. So we're going to have to create another variable. We can make this one add input if we want. And that one is just going to get the text just like before. And where's it getting it from? Well, this reminder input right here. Well, that's only half of the problem, kids. What's the other half? The other half is we have to append or add items in. And we have our append item here. We just have to tell it the list and what item we want to add. Well, kids, we just made a variable to add. That means all we really have to do, move append item in here, list, we want to do a remind list. And what do we want to actually put in there? Well, we're not doing anything specific, so we don't need quotes. We are just going to do the add input. 
And every time I hit add input, that should store it in the remainder list. It'll go to the end, kids, because remember, append adds items to the end. Like the other ones, we also have to do update screen. And at this point, our program should work a little. Let's see what it does. Kids, if you try to hit run now, you're going to get an error. And the error is going to say, hey, this is undefined. Because our function's really just saying function set property. That's not really telling it to do anything. What we have to do is we have to build an if statement in here. So when this happens, if this happens, we need something to, to actually be accomplished. Let's go ahead and drag our if into here. Well, let's go to blocks first and then drag our property right in there like that. Now, what we want to say here, just like the other one, is if a reminder list, remind a list dot length, so we have to get the length of the list. As long as this list is greater than zero, we want to set this up. Now, when I go ahead and hit reset run, it should allow me to add items. Let's do like the new APCSP video. Let's hit add. And we get an ad there. Now, kids, I want you to see something. If I want to add something else, I have to go in here and actually delete it. And that's really annoying. And I don't like that. And we can fix that really easy. And what do we have to do in that one is we can just come over here and we can set our property. And this is just our reminder input. And we're going to do this with text. We're just going to set this to blank. So I'm just going to put two quotes there. Ooh, I end up with 14 kids. And when I hit run, when I go to add something, let's do it. Test. See how it's blank now. And anything I put in there would come up if I did it. So for example, if I just put add another item and hit run, see how that comes up. But again, kids, Look, you got to erase it. Oh, that's annoying. So let's just delete this and leave that blank. When we go run, let's do a test one. Let's do test two and test three. I can scroll through them, but kids, You'll see here, one, I got an error because I went too low, and I don't have my counter moving. That means I need to bring my counter into play here. And I'm going to set that property to just like every other one. And what I'm going to do is just set property, and this thing is called the counter output or count output. And this one, I am just going to do it towards a text. And this one I did to the reminder list index. And I'm going to do something very similar. I just want to know whatever the index is. But I want to go plus one because remember, it's going zero through nine. I want human count. So I want plus one. Now, if we run test, test, oh, we should do test four or three so we know what we're on. We can add to that. You can see the numbers are there. Kids, I'm getting an error here, and I think I know what it is. If we go to my left button, I should be actually going down, going up. Left button should go down. This button should go up. So really, kids, all I'm doing is just keep going up, and I'm going out of bounds. And that isn't good. Now let's try it one more time here. We'll do a test 
one, test two, test three. Test one, test two, test three. I can't go any further now because remember the other condition was if I was just greater than zero. So as long as I was greater than zero, like right now I am, I could go up, but that's out of bounds, kids. That's why I was getting an error there. But now I go down and I can't go out of bounds. So I just had that as a plus instead of a minus. But look, kids, my numbers are working perfect. And really, kids, that's about everything we can do. You can see one last little part here, kids. I'm a big fan. If there's an if, there should be an else. And here's a nice little way to soft code something into here. And if you go to our reminder output, I have this add anything placeholder here, kids. A lot of times you can't put a placeholder in. This is really just a JavaScript thing. A lot of other languages won't let you do that. And what we can do is we can just put an else statement in and we can soft code this in. So we're going to do the same set property, just like we did here with our blank list kids. We're going to drag this down here. And this ID is going to be the reminder output again. And what do I want to put in there? Text. And this time, I'm going to put add another item. Let's hit run. And you can see now it comes up add another item. When I add test one, it'll go away. So that's just another little way of putting it in there instead of putting in your design. Sometimes that's a good little way to cheat around some things if you need to put an if else statement and use an if else statement. Well, kids, I think that's everything that code.org wanted for this. And if you turn in a project that is coded like this, you are definitely going to get an A. That means that's it for this video. As always, kids, if you have any other questions, please come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.